So, you guys just brought home a big plant haul. And there's still how many weeks before planting it out into your garden? What do you do with your plants now? How do you keep them looking nice? Today we are going to cover how to keep your plants looking good. We're gonna give you great maintenance tips, uh, watering tips, fertilizing tips, bug control tips, all the goodies. had a greenhouse so today we're also going to cover different areas where you can store your plants to keep them healthy so obviously the number one space to grow your big haul before it goes into the garden is a greenhouse before we had a greenhouse we actually grew everything inside of the house we have windows that face south and west so it gave us perfect lighting to grow inside of the home we'd actually bring in big folding tables to grow on along with the shelves that lay inside of our windows that Jason built me. We'd also bring in large pallets to grow a lot of our container gardens on so that way they weren't just like sitting on the floor. But not only would we grow in the house but then we'd go and get a huge haul from my parents garden center. I know a lot of you guys are doing this right now because you want to get the best pick, you want to get varieties that are usually sold out later. So you're going there and you're hoarding it all. And not only are you getting what you went there for, but you're also getting anything that you're impulsing on. So you're ending up with this huge haul, which we do every year. So before the greenhouse, that huge haul then would go into our garage. Our garage has windows in it. And we also make sure it stays nice and warm. So it's insulated. And we also brought in some space heaters to keep it just a tad warmer. If you're putting it right into a really cold garage, your plants are going to go into a little bit of shock. They'll still look okay, but um, they're not going to stay looking the best. Um, so you're going to want to also dedicate time to bringing those plants in and out. So if it's a nice day out and it's not freezing cold, raining, or sleeting, you need to bring those plants outside. They need that fresh air. You can open up the garage door. So if they're already getting a lot of sun just from the garage door being open, that's fine. But then I'd also recommend rotating your plants because the plants in front are going to get the most sunlight. So that way everything's kind of growing evenly. But if you open up that garage door and it's not facing, you know, south or west and it's not bringing in a ton of sunlight, then you're going to want to dedicate time to bringing your, your, your plants outside and inside. We dedicated a ton of time to this last year. When our garage doors open, they face north. So we don't get much sunlight in there at all, other than the windows that are in there. So we would bring the plants outside and then bring them inside at night. We did this every single day, unless it was freezing cold, raining or sleeting. But I will tell you that once it came time to plant everything in the gardens and containers, everything still looked just as gorgeous as the day that we bought it and it actually looked even better just because it grew so well. Once I get the plants home, I like to go through and take off any old flowers. And then I also go and separate them out so they can start growing out and up evenly. And I only do this with varieties that are growing really close together. Like right here, as I'm showing you, these are seed geraniums. So I go through and I take out um, pots so every other one we take out and we separate out otherwise if they grow closely together they start getting a ton of yellow and brown leaves on the bottom because they're not getting the sunlight they will all also become unevenly watered and get moldy leaves in the middle if you're watering from the top and then you also want to take off the bad flowers because the petals then drop onto the leaves and if the leaves get wet then those petals stay wet on top of the leaf and cause the leaf to turn brown and moldy so that's why i like to remove these especially on cloudy days like we've been having a lot here when you get cloudy days flowers like to retire pretty quickly once i start separating them out i also take off any of the bad leaves as well Now 
how they're separated out really nicely and it will create them to grow a lot more evenly and nice and full and bushy. And then next we'll just take off those bad flowers and then we'll be done with these geraniums here. If they're in trays where they already provide a nice space and they're not growing too much in into each other yet, then you can just leave them as is. Like in this tray here with the coleus, they're just starting to grow nice and large now, but they're in these trays where they also provide space here. So that's why we're just gonna leave them for now. As they start getting really big, I remove the two from the middle, so that way it allows the middle to air out here and everything can grow evenly. This verbena imagination was a lot prettier and showier when I got it at the garden center. But since we've been having cloudy days, it's starting to retire its flowers. So you want to maintain them just like you would in the garden. So anywhere you see a dead flower, we go down to the first set of leaves and cut it right there. And what you can also do, instead of being so kind and gentle, <laughs> I know a lot of you have a hard time whenever I show a lot of this, but you can just go ahead and grab just like a ponytail and go like this and just cut everything down to the same height. That will allow the whole plant to start bushing out and focusing on the growth of the plant. So that way when we go outside and plant it in the garden, it's already a nice full bushy plant. Right now it's just really a thinner plant. See, it's just really a thinner plant to where if you're cutting it down, like right here, then it becomes a little shorter for now, but it's gonna start bushing out really nice. So by the time we're ready to plant it out in the garden, it'll be a nice bushy full plant and it'll be in blossom for us. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that really quick. You can cringe all you want, but it's actually very helpful. And guess what, you guys? It saves time. If there's some lower, I just kind of go like as if you're giving it a haircut. If you get a little scissor happy, don't worry. You're not gonna kill it. So now the Verbena Imagination is all nicely prepped for planting in our garden in another few weeks. I'm going to use the lime potato vine as an example to share with you a few little tips here on watering. So when they're growing closer like this, I will eventually separate these out like we've already discussed. But when they're growing closer like this, you don't wanna just go and water on top of the foliage while you're you know, hosting them in your house or in the garage because that's gonna create a lot of gnats, it's gonna create uneven watering, it's gonna create a lot of bad leaves. So what you wanna do is you wanna come in here and check each pot individually. I go by the color of the soil a lot. As you can see right here, this looks dark, which means it's wet. It also feels really wet to the touch. This one here is really light in color, and if you touch it, it crumbles, it feels super dry. There's no moisture in my fingertips at all when I touch that soil. And when you look at them side by side, you can see wet, dry. So if you were to water on top of this entire tray, you'd be watering everything, even the wet pots. That's why I like to go in there and actually water only the areas that are dry. If you're watering the areas that are already wet, you're gonna start getting over watering where your plant's gonna start yellowing and not looking good. It can even die from root rot. You're also going to get gnats because if you're growing it in the garage or in your house, there's not as much airflow. And if you're growing in a greenhouse, a garage or the house, wherever it is you're growing it, you need to have some fans. There needs to be some air circulation. Now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this canna. As you can see, they're looking really gorgeous. This is the South Pacific Scarlet Canna. And I'm gonna show you this because I wanted to share with you what soil can look like when it's in between. This is where people get confused, is when something doesn't look wet, but yet it doesn't look dry. What do I do? Do nothing. Let it dry. 
If you're really unsure and you can't tell even by feeling it, it looked a little dry, but yet when I touch it, I feel so much moisture in my fingertips. You can also put your finger under the soil, go up to at least the first knuckle. And I feel a lot of moisture under there, so I'm, I'm just gonna leave it. And if you have flowers like these geraniums here that are dropping petals on the leaves, be sure to just shake those off of the leaves so that way the leaves are even nice and clean. We hope you guys are enjoying this video filled with tons of tips so far. If you don't already, feel free to hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell so you don't miss any future gardening videos. So now you know when to water, when not to water, and when to just kind of leave it. You know, the more you water, the more things can actually turn out worse. So you really just want to watch the amount you're watering when you're growing in the garage or in your house. The next thing I want to cover as well is, you know, when you go and pick out all of your flowers, everything looks fabulous. You're coming home, you're taking care of it with doing everything that I'm suggesting and you're, you're doing everything you can. Everything is clean, spaced out, watered correctly, but yet it's still not looking as nice as it did at the garden center. Well, just to let you know, garden centers fertilize a lot. They want to be able to make things look nice, lush, full in color, and we're going to share with you a little bit on how we fertilize our plants to keep them looking good um, up until they go out to the garden. So not only our flowering plants, but also our, our edible plants that we are growing in the greenhouse right now. All right, so for our edibles, we are organic. So. For the past few years, we've been using either the Job's or the Espoma brand, but now what I'm loving is that the Espoma came out with an organic liquid fertilizer, which is awesome. Now I feel like I can finally use it through our injector. Before we were just using the dry fertilizer throughout all of our gardens and we would just have to toss it. It was so stinky, but this here isn't that stinky. So we're, uh, we're pretty happy because then that way we don't, <laughs> we don't have to uh, plan our little garden get togethers around the time that we're fertilizing in the garden. So um, what we've been loving about it is that they make it so easy for gardeners to use and measure. So it's all you do is you tip the bottle upside down it naturally fills up the top cap here as like a reservoir and then you turn it regular nothing comes out of that reservoir it holds the liquid right in on top you open the cap you pour no squeezing just pour the right amount will come out that that this filled up with and then you fill it with water one gallon and that's how we water all of our vegetables in the in the greenhouse right now so that's been very beneficial this will work great for our raised beds um, so for our flowers we are very different with our flowers we're not organic on our flowers we you can pretty much use any uh, liquid fertilizer for bloom boosting that's what we like anything that's bloom boosting we prefer the jacks brand but we'll also get whatever we have to because we don't always find jacks at like a Home Depot or a Lowe's that's something we always have to order online we'll put that link in the description of this video too along with the Espoma that we use right now and right here we've got some Agro Thrive mixed up it's a new organic fertilizer we're also trying and we are comparing the Agro Thrive and the Espoma performance on our tomatoes over here and they're actually all looking great <laughs> so <laughs> we'll have to see and uh, we'll just keep monitoring it for the next six weeks don't mind my fertilizer it actually got a little water in it um, doesn't mean it's gonna work any less but when we're fertilizing inside we're fertilizing every other time we're watering but we're fertilizing super duper lightly so just a tiny little bit it's literally just tiny little droplets the only reason why we're fertilizing with just a little bit at a time rather than the full amount is because we're fertilizing more often. So instead of every third to fourth time we're watering, we're doing it every time or every other time of watering. And then we fill it up and mix it up. And then we're gonna go ahead and water a few plants with it. Well, I figure we might as well come back over here to the potato vine since they already need some water but as you can see we're not going to touch the wet ones with water we're only going to touch the 
the dry ones here with water. If you don't know if you watered them all the way through, you can always turn it upside down. As you can see, the bottom looks actually pretty dry. So we'll have to water that one in even more. So on cloudy days, I keep the watering a little lighter. I don't always water through all the way because things stay a lot more wet when it's not sunny out. Over here we have the Grand Daisy. Must be called that because it's the granddaddy of the daisies. Not too sure, but maybe because it's grand as well, nice and large. Um, so I just love the color. I feel like this is going to attract a lot of beneficials and pollinators to the garden. So um, what I'm going to do in order to keep it looking nice and continue to grow well before being put out into the garden is we're going to go ahead and take off all of the dead flowers by keeping all the dead flowers once again. It helps it um, get a lot bushier and focus more on the actual growth of the plant and producing more um, and producing more flowers. So as you can see, I'm gonna go right down to the next large stem of growth right there and cut. So I'm not going by the leaves with this. These are really fine leaves. We go by the actual growth of the larger stemmed areas here. So right here, for example, this one's becoming bad. So we're not gonna cut down to that first leaf. We're gonna cut down to that first growth. There you go. And we're going to continue to do that throughout the whole whole daisy here. And there we go. It's all ready to just focus on its growth and produce even more flowers for us. Maintaining plants is no joke, you guys. It takes a lot of dedication. So just be prepared that if you're going to buy all of your plants now and you still have, you know, a few weeks before you're going to plant them outside in the garden, it's going to take some work. All right, Fuzz. Fuzz wants to be let out. <laughs> Fuzz, you want to go outside? Okay, come on. All right, here you go. There you go. The sun finally came out. Is that why you want to go outside? Yeah. So now that you have everything separated, all the bad flowers are off, you're watering correctly, you're fertilizing, but there's still a problem. Your plants aren't looking as good. Well, you're bringing all of these plants together. You're bound to get some type of bad bug, whether it's thrips or aphids or something else. Something's there to rain on your parade. You're having all this fun with all of these plants, but then there's always something there to stop the party. So I'm gonna share with you what we use. It's an organic option and we actually have really good luck with it and it helps us. Um, it's organic, it's Monterey. We'll also share the product link in the description of this video. Um, but we're gonna show you how we mix it up and use it. We're gonna show you some of the signs of thrip that we're having right now. Um, it's something that you have to use every, you know, uh, seven to 14 days, depending on whether you have an infestation or you're just doing an, a maintenance spray. So I'm gonna show you a little bit on how we use that and get started right now. So when using Monterey, you can use just a small little spray bottle if that's easier for you, um, especially if it's in the house, or you can use um, a one to two gallon sprayer. We like to use a sprayer because we have the whole greenhouse. So if I were to go around the, the whole greenhouse with just a sprayer, I'd end up with tendinitis. So um, we're gonna go ahead and fill the sprayer. Always let the air out. I've had it where I've unscrewed it and the cap came right up at my face before. So I learned my lesson now to let the air out first. Depressurize it. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. And um, on Monterey, it's so easy to follow along. They have easy instructions on the back for mixing whatever size you wanna mix. But we've been using it for so long now, even through our um, entire summer garden season last year that we just eyeball it we're used to using it there we go and then we're going to add some water here we go i'm going to let the water run just in case there's anything in the hose sometimes there gets a little gunk in the hose so i like to run it first that way it doesn't get caught in the sprayer and then we go ahead and fill up the sprayer there we go and I'm also going to add some soap soap actually helps um, the any type of organic spray sit on the leaf just a little bit longer so it elongates the use of it 
we're gonna put quite a bit in there there we go I like using the Mrs. Myers brand I don't get any burning on my plants with that and then we're gonna go ahead put this on and we're gonna give it a good pumping I know you guys see us using this all the time it's super easy to mix it's for organic gardening um, but we're not going to use it until the end of the day when the sun's just about to set and once i got it mixed in there then i actually just go ahead and shake it around so the product is mixed really really well and then once the end of the day comes we spray i'm going to show you how we use it on just one of our plants so that way we can show you and then do the rest at the end of the day when it's safe. So I've got my balloon flower right here. I'm gonna show you how we spray it. So we spray it on top of the foliage and we also spray it underneath the foliage. I'm gonna to have to adjust my sprayer here. But you wanna make sure it's nice and dripping wet. And since it's sunny out right now, I'm actually gonna move this into more of a shaded spot so the sun can't hit it when this product's on there because it could you know affect some leaves depending on the variety once it's dry it's completely fine though signs of bug damage are markings on the leaves and as you can see right where my finger is that's actually a thrip they're really small and narrow and this is the type of damage that they do another sign is curling of the leaves Yellowing leaves and wilting is actually another sign. If you ever notice a beautiful flower bud never opens up and just falls off, that's also a sign of bugs. As you can see, there are many signs of bad bugs, but these are the few that we've been dealing with. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you don't already subscribe, feel free to click the subscribe button and don't forget to click the bell so you don't miss any future videos. I hope today's videos brought you some great tips and that it can help you along your way from taking care of your flowers all the way up until the garden time starts. So thank you so much, have a great day and have fun.